So in this video, I'm going to be going through the basics of breeding this genus, which is the Dorcas genus. And in specific, I'm going to be talking about how I can breed, uh, how we can breed this Dorcas Titanus Palawanicus. So the overall result of the breeding really comes down to the size of your male and your female. If you have a big male and a big female, you will get new, uh, bigger newer generations. So choosing the right kinshi wood is also very important. So right here, I've got a uh, kinshi wood, which is half fungus, half rotten wood uh, sort of form. As you can see, the sides are shaved off. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot to record that part of the video, but the sides are all shaved off. And you can see that it is half fungus, half rotten wood. Here are the shavings. It's not a lot of shavings. I've only shaved off some parts of the wood. You don't necessarily need to shave it, but it's just something I like to do. I don't want unnecessary parts on my wood. Here is another piece inside a plastic bag. As you can see, this one has mold forming already, which is why I didn't use this one because I don't want any risk uh, where the mold would affect the soil or affect the overall breeding process. The, these are risks and I don't want to take these risks. So this is one wood I didn't choose. And unfortunately, the temperature of the room really affects these woods. So you want to keep it cool. This wood right here, it's got no mold on it, it's completely fine, the fungus are growing perfectly fine, these are great. Next step, after we've placed a piece of log on top of a thin layer of soil, we want to put more soil on top. And let me just clarify, these are actually not soil, these are actually wood flakes. And then specifically, they are actually fermented wood flakes, but I just call them soil because it's just easier and, you know, it's a shorter form of saying uh, what these wood flakes are. Now you want to put a little bit on first and then you want to shake it through so you want to make sure they all go through evenly and that you won't have any air gaps because air gaps are also threats when it comes to the breeding process and this is what i do again and again and again just a little bit at a time and you want to shake it through so my voice is quite dead and i hope that doesn't affect the overall quality of the video and that i hope there can be more subscribers towards my channel because i'm trying to post weekly now i'm trying to make sure that my frequency is up make sure my content is up as well so thank you guys for supporting me and i see there is a steady growth in terms of my subscribers i hope it can still keep going because there's still a lot of uh, viewers that haven't really subscribed to my videos so thank you guys for the support and i hope that you know there can be a little bit more subscribers but back to the main topic, now that we're around 60-70% full, we want to break up some parts of the wood flakes. We want to make sure there's no clumps in it. So here's what I get. I get a tweezer and I start poking them. I start breaking the clumps up so that, you know, things could be more evenly spread out. And uh, use the tweezer to make sure you move the wood flakes around so that it doesn't, it doesn't pile up in one corner. You want to make sure this is as even as possible. Now, if we look from the side, we can still we can still see some air gaps. So we're going to try and shake it up a little bit and see if we can get rid of the air gaps. But the final step is we have to push these uh, wood flakes down. Now, to pressure them down, just get anything that's flat right here. I've got a clip and uh, just use a small tool which can push them down. You can use your fingers, you can use anything, just make sure it comes down flat. Uh, this is the tool I found in my room, which is just a clip and it turned it turned out to be all right. It was fine, it wasn't great, but it was something I, I could use. So you wanna really put some pressure on it. Don't be afraid of pushing too hard. Uh, it'll be fine because these beetles, they're very used to digging in very hard surfaces. They are very professionals at digging into hard wood. And in terms of the rotten wood we're choosing, the level of softness, you don't want to choose wood that's too soft. You need to choose one that is medium to hard. You don't want one that is way too soft because otherwise there's not enough pressure for them to dig into and they won't realize there's a piece of log there. And then out comes two jellies. You want to put two jellies because you want to make sure there's enough food for the female when she crawls around. You don't want her to, you know, lose all that energy. You, you want to make sure that she can replenish her energy at all times. Uh, I would personally put two and not four because I think four is an overdue 
uh, two would be enough. And if it's, you know, if it's a half empty or something, just change it whenever. And now we can put, put the lid on. Uh, I've got this decorated lid, but as you can see, this lid is a specialized uh, enclosure. It's made to keep beetles so that flies don't go in. I also like to put masking tape and also write the date down so I know when I started making this uh, breeding enclosure. And that's it. That's done. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. Thanks.